We greet all of you tonight in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thankful you're <coughs> able to be with us. We welcome those, too, who have joined us on live stream. We consider it uh, a very valuable fellowship to be able to be with one another, though we're separated by considerable distance. Tonight, this will be our, the, our 80th lesson in uh, our exposition of Genesis. We're drawing close to the close of it. Tonight we'll be in the 49th chapter, verses 16 through 33. We're in the second part now of Jacob blessing his sons. <clears throat> Begin tonight with the blessing of Dan, verse 16. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is like a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father who shall help thee, and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Every one according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a possession for a, of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into his bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Amen. And thus comes to a close the last of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob continues to prophesy over his sons. And he delivers a rather lengthy word about Joseph, as you noticed. 
Yet in prominence, Joseph had to yield to Judah, yeah, right. yeah. who had the praise. The degree to which any person can be acceptably praised and honored is determined by God himself. Amen. God determines who is to receive honor. Yes. No man can take the honor to himself, not even the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. It is said of him, no man taketh this honor unto himself, it's honor of the high priest, but he that is called of God as Aaron was, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Amen. this is not the world's way of thinking. The world, in the educational processes, teaches people how to promote themselves. In fact, it's a, it's a big business, actually. This, unfortunately, has spilled over into the Christian arena, where people promote themselves. This is not right. There's something about the kingdom of God I want to draw attention to before we get into this text. And that is that God himself chooses who participates in his purpose. Amen. Yeah. This is not on a volunteer basis. Yeah. It's not after the manner of men who are prone to exalt themselves. When it comes to the kingdom of God, it's God who determines who's going to participate, and at what level they're going to participate. Amen. Now, we've seen this in Genesis. This should not, we've seen it so far. Abraham was the progenitor of the Jewish nation. God chose him. Isaac was the one through which that promise was extended. God chose him. Jacob was the one through whom Isaac's promise was extended. God chose him. Joseph was chosen to keep him alive during famine and to get them into Egypt where they could grow and multiply. Moses was chosen to lead them out of Egypt. Israel was chosen as a people. They're the only flesh and blood people God has ever chosen. Amen. Hmm? There's never another nation God has chosen. No body of flesh and blood people has God ever chosen except Israel. God chose Aaron to be high priest. God chose Joshua to be the captain that led him into Canaan. God chose the prophets to speak to the people of God his words. God chose David to be the one through which the reign of Christ would be established. God chose John the Baptist. You see, everything, everything is particular. God chose John the Baptist to prepare the way for the Savior. God chose the apostles through whom Jesus Amen. revealed his will and worked. God chose the various ministry and gifts that are in the church. We are told that elders are overseers, that the Holy Spirit makes them overseers. Official ministries for the edifying of the body. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, they're chosen by, by God and Christ. And the elect themselves are given to Jesus. All This is all confirmed in the book of Genesis. This should not take anybody by surprise. Yes. People that argue against such things as election and things like this, see, they don't know the scripture. That, that's their chief handicap is they do not know the scripture. Amen. They may think they do, but they do not. Yeah, Once you know the scripture, it's almost on every page. Yeah. Amen. That God does the choosing. Mm -hmm. That's how this thing works. Mm -hmm. All confirmed in the book of Genesis. Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Judah, all chosen by God. 
That, in fact, is what made them distinct. Mm -hmm. Their ability didn't make them distinct. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brother. I think the reason why that God does it that way is so no one can boast. That's yeah. exactly yeah. it. And, and that's, what, that's also why it's so offensive to people, because it's offensive <laughs> to your pride. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. That no flesh should glory in His presence. Mm -hmm. Cain was first, but God chose Abel. Ishmael was first, but God chose Isaac. <laughs> Esau was first, but God chose Jacob. Reuben was first, but God gave the birthright to Joseph. See, this is all, all through. You. So this should not, I want to emphasize that this should not take anybody by surprise. In fact, it should be surprising that anyone didn't see it. Yeah. Yes. Um, whenever you realize just how far sin took the human race down, it's as though God has gone out of his way to do mm -hmm. it this way. Otherwise, we could not have seen exactly this right. aspect of God. Mm -hmm. We would have attributed it yeah. to things natural mm -hmm. rather than, than to the work of God. But whenever he makes it obvious that the natural order of things yeah is set often set aside or yes, amen. then he expects men to look at that and say this is the Lord amen yeah yeah what is I say once once you see it and you're convinced of it it's like everywhere mm -hmm. yeah you know you was talking about their chief hindrance or the chief handicap but they don't know the scriptures but and I thought about all these people read and hear about they got a, a lot of knowledge of Scripture, but it's not free and clear. Yes. <coughs> free and clear of any kind of bias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, they they're not they they're not uh, they're not able to think uh, in in the way that God is doing things. Amen. They're, they're there's, handicapped. There's great sections of Scripture they hardly know anything about mm -hmm. because they think it's been it's been obviated. Amen. It's been rendered obsolete. <coughs> Theology inhibits their understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Some people's theology inhibits their understanding. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. right. Now, a good acquaintance with the, an understanding of just the book of Genesis. <laughs> They'll speak to you of things like electing, choosing, predestinating, foreknowing, raising up certain people. See, if, if this is the only book you know, it, it, this is in here, all through here. So when a person has properly digested the writings of Moses, none of these teachings will be offensive to them. Yes, amen. In fact, it'll kind of clarify everything. Kind of clarify everything. Yes. He accused Moses. He said, We're Israelites too. We're sons of right. Levi too. Who made, who made you the ruler? The ruler? Who, That's right. Who, who said you were appointed to We're in the right tribe. They had. Yeah, right. And so God showed them. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to see it, all these doctrines fleshed out. Look at Genesis. That's right. Yeah. It's all there. Yeah, Lived out in, in real life with real people. Yes, mm -hmm. amen. Not just theoretical. See, a lot of theology is just theoretical. That's all it is, is theoretical. It's not substantive. It's based on men's ideas and how they assemble things together. But here you've got it. It's actually lived out. You don't have to guess about it. Now, I have this little uh, chart I made of that God's overall and his purpose is overall. And the earth is, and everything in it is incidental. That doesn't mean it's not important, but it's, it's incidental. Now what God does, he goes into the earth and he draws some people out and integrate them, integrates them with his purpose and they become a co-worker with, with God. That's how, that's how it works. Now, this is what Jesus was saying when he said, No man can come unto me except the Father that has sent me yes. draw him. This is the kind of thing he was talking yes. about. It isn't just, I'm, I'm going to pick you and, and you're very fortunate that I did. It's for a purpose. Yes, amen. 
They're integrated into a purpose. They become a worker and a laborer, and a co-laborer. That's, see, that's become involved in what God's doing. And anyone who is involved in what's, what God is doing as he is ordained has a blessed future in store. I, to get them reached, it goes out, reaches, takes them, separates them. But there's an environment he's got to take them through. There's an environment that's ruled by the devil in between earth and heaven. And so he draws these people out and takes them through that environment. And they, very few people have passed through that environment uh -huh. <laughs> safely. But the people God draws out, they, they go through this environment. If you've survived, that's why you have. God's drawn you up out of this hodgepodge. Yeah, technically, everyone was, was, in a sense, predestined for hell. I mean, in, in, by nature. So yeah. the fact that anybody saved is that God became involved in it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know that is yeah, said perfectly. That's perfectly. not the right word, yeah, because... Yeah. <laughs> right. no, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got... Because God doesn't predestinate no, anybody to hell. They were by default. That was their. Whatever you do about God's predestination, it's it's for a noble purpose. The yeah. exceptions would be like Judas and Pharaoh, but yeah. they were used for they were used for a purpose yes. that was a garbage yeah. can purpose. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Christians that have taught that people are predestined to health called double yes. predestination. I know it. And then if I am, what's the use? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was in the early in early eighteen hundreds and latter eighteen hundreds, there were people that went crazy. Mm -hmm. They were they were in institutions for the insane because they were they wanted to be saved, but they didn't think maybe they, they thought they weren't able to be. Mm -hmm. They actually went crazy. Yeah. Theology made him crazy. Yeah. Well, that's not that's not what yeah. that's not the proper use of this. <clears throat> now Jacob affirms his own blessings. He's going to affirm exceeds out of Abraham and, and Isaac the, because the thing was mushrooming out. Mm -hmm. See, he had more children than Abraham and Isaac had. Combined, he had more, uh -huh. more children. Now let's look at the, begin with the prophecy to Dan. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. And actually, the only judge that came from Dan was Samson. So we had to kind of probe into what, what this means. And so some do say, well, that fulfills the prophecy, the 20 year period that Samson judged. I don't, I don't believe that's it. I believe this is traced back to what Rachel said when Dan was born, who was the first child of her handmaid, Bilhah. Here's what she said. God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son. Therefore, she called his name Dan. So I will trace through here some of this, but he will recompense Rachel through this, through Dan. And I don't question it was partially fulfilled through Samson, but not, not fully. He was going to be discreet, in other words. He was going to, he would be, their tribe would be discreet as compared to having strength. He said, now, now, another thing, that, that Dan was the first child of a handmaid, but he was going to participate with all of Israel. He was going to have an inheritance with all of Israel, just like the other sons did. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that biteth the horse heels so that the riders shall fall backward. Now, this depicts Daniel's shrewdness in warfare, it was not always good. Some of the descendants of Dan one time came to a city of Laish, a quiet and secure and unsuspecting, peaceable type city. 
and using stealth, they smote them with the edge of the sword and burned the city with fire, like a serpent, biting at the heels. They didn't know anything was going to happen. As an example of that, they renamed the city Dan after the name of Dan, their father, who was born unto Israel, Judges 18.29. They also set up a graven image. Yeah. Right, at, right after they, it's what it said, they set up the graven image, yeah. what it was with, mm -hmm. as Dan. Yeah. So at this point, his wisdom didn't extend yeah. this far. Then after, he, this must have been hard for, hard for Father Jacob to say. So it's like he interjects something in the middle of this. He says, I have waited for thy salvation. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like an expression that gives brings some relief. Yeah. It's not going to come from Dan. I can see that. Yeah. But yeah. Now, that was a difficult word for him to deliver as I see it. Yeah. But see his faith, how his faith yeah, reached beyond the circumstance. Yeah. See, a person without faith would have bogged down. Right there, he'd have bogged down and got stuck in the slew of the spawn. Yeah. Right there. Uh -huh. My own son. Yes. Could be known for a sneak attack person. Hmm. But he, is a, he reached out. Hmm. His faith was so strong. I've waited for thy salvation. So he pauses to gain some strength so he can proceed. Yeah. Now, it's of interest that in the book of the Revelation, the 12 tribes are cited, 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe, and Dan is omitted. Hmm, Dan's not in there. I list there who's in there. Dan's not in there, and Joseph is. And Ephraim and Manasseh are too. Now, I'll give my as I perceive that the reasons why and why they're not in there. And Ephraim, he's not in there either. Just Manasseh. Dan was given over to idolatry. Judges 18.30 says that. The tribe of Dan was given over to idolatry, at least at that time. And it appears to be a, like a distinguishing mark of the tribe of Dan. They also failed to route the Amorites from the territory that was given to them. That's stated in Judges 134. And also Deborah upbraided them because they stayed in ships while a time of battle was existent. So see, God didn't forget. <laughs> they're, they're not included in the listing in Revelation. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Ephraim they're omitted also. This tribe didn't expel the Canaanites from their territory. This tribe, Ephraim, chided Gideon for not asking them to help them rout the Midianites. And then they chided Jephthah for not calling upon him to help them fight against Ammon. They were like perpetual gripers. And they worshipped Baal. That's Hosea 13.1. They were, the wayward ten tribes were called Ephraim. I give the text. He refers to the wayward ten tribes as Ephraim. That is, they had the character of Ephraim. Though they were omitted. See, uh, <laughs> be sure your sins will find you out. We learn from this that certain expressions of iniquity are especially noted by God. They're, all sin is not like on the same same level. All sin is sin, but all sin is not on like on an equal basis. Some sins are particularly noticed, and and it, at the end they they're brought up. At the end, this has much to do with when they were committed, and the circumstances under which they were committed. Now, Peter denied Christ, but Judas, see, it was a different time and a different circumstance when he, see? Mm -hmm. So the time and the circumstance 
plays a role here and how God views sin. Some sins have greater impact than others because of when and where they've committed. Mm -hmm. We have that with uh, Dan and Ephraim. But even in this prophecy, Jacob looks upward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. See, he looks upward. He doesn't get bogged down here. Now he turns to Gad. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. That's kind of a short prophecy. Gad were among the three, they were part of three groups that elected to stay on the other side of Jordan. They elected not to live in Canaan, but to live on the other side of Jordan. Gad was one of those tribes. Instead of the promised land, they chose to live there. However, Joshua required that they fight with Israel until they subdued the land, until they, until they subdued so the forces weren't against them. They had to fight with Israel. Then when they, when they didn't go back, but when you go back, you've got to keep the law. You've got to keep the law. You choose to live on the other side of Jordan, you've got to keep the law. So if someone elects to live on the other side of the dividing line, we got this message. You got to keep the commandments. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You may be free from us, but you're not free from God. Amen. You still obligate. And every time we need you, huh. you got to come and fight. Yeah. That was the agreement. Now they had to make. Right. So if a fight broke out, they had to, and they and, and they did. Mm -hmm. They had to rally and go over and fight with them. Later, they together with the Reubenites and half tribe of Manasseh were reduced in size by a king named Haziel. Those tribes that elected to stay on the other side, they were reduced in size by a Syrian king, Haziel. And they were also, these tribes were also carried away captive by Tilgath Pilneser, king of Assyria, king of Syria. All of this was God dealing with them for making this choice. You made this choice. To be less than you could have been. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Oh, this is what I've talked to some people. You made this choice to live lower than you could have lived. Amen. You decided not to live where the blessings in the land I blessed. You decided not to live there. Amen. So this is what happened. Yeah. This happens to people yeah. that decide to be less. Mm -hmm than what Jesus intends. They're going to be captured at some point. At some point, they're going to pay for it. Amen. They're going to do it. There it is, all spelled out in Gad. That's the divine manner. There's such a thing as being overcome by divine appointment. <laughs> there is such a thing as that. The revelation makes known I want to buttress this. There's such a thing as being overcome by divine appointment Amen. for choosing, making the wrong choices. We dedicate this to the free willers. Yes. The beast which carried the great whore, Revelation 17, 3, the beast there was earthly government, by carrying the great whore, it means that the church was organized after the manner of the, of the world. Yes. After the manner of the kingdoms that the whirling stone ground to powder. Mm -hmm. And Satan actually convinced <laughs> some professing Christians to be like the kingdoms that the stone rolled over. Yeah, that's right. yeah. mm. Now it says in, of this, of the beast, Revelation 13, 7, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. There you have it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not the ungodly, the saints. Right. Why? Well, they like these three tribes. Uh -huh. They had chosen the lower ground. Uh -huh. They'd chosen the lesser. Yeah. And when God gives of abundance, he does not like people taking paltry portions. Yeah. Amen. Now, this is the way God is. You've yeah. got to really see this. We don't, we don't mean to like uh, preach what they call law and this sort of thing, but this is how God is. If God pours out uh -huh. an abundance, 
Woe to the man that takes a handful. It just will not go well with them, and you've got it lived out here. Daniel, he refers to this too. To the saints being worn out by a despot. He says, and the ten horns out of his kingdom, that's this earthly empire upon which the horse sat, are ten kings that shall arise, another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, be a king that excels above others, and shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Hey, Daniel. Daniel saw this. Yeah, right. Wear out the saints. See now, if a if the saints are living by faith, this this doesn't happen. Yeah. But see, a lot of people, saints, mm -hmm. they're identified with the Lord. You say, well, they're not real. Well, they're real enough for God to make a judgment against That's them. Right. They're they're that real. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You say, well, they're hypocrites. Well, they're, they're real enough that yeah. God pours out. If judgment begins at the house of God. Yes. If the house of God doesn't have any fl flaws, then why would they be judged? Yes, that's right. It's true. So it's a divine, uh, mm -hmm. divine manner. I don't want to spend an inordinate amount of time on this, but I want to mention in Israel how many times they were overcome mm -hmm. by a divine appointment. They overcome and serve Chushan, Chushan Rishatham for a period of eight years. They were overcome and served Eglon for 18 years. They were overcome and saved Jabin 20 years. They overcome and saved the Midi served the Midianites seven years. The Philistines vexed and oppressed them for 18 years. Then the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. They were smitten by the Philistines with 30,000 footmen of Israel being slain. And they were overcome by the Babylonians and held in captivity for 70 years. See? All this by divine appointment. Yeah. All by divine appointment. Now, uh -huh. people had to be able to put this together. Yeah. If the assessment is right, that we have a weak church on our hands, you shouldn't have to study a long time to know what's going to take place. Yeah, right. yeah. In fact, I think a lot of it has has taken place. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but but he shall overcome at last. The idea of the text is not that, not that the manner in which Gad will attack his enemies is that he'll attack him and he'll outfight him. That, that, that's not the point. It's that when everybody else falls, he'll still have his sword. After he's been attacked, he'll still... That overcoming means when the foes wore out, you're still there. Mm -hmm. Still got your sword held high. Yeah. That's the winner. That's right. He'll overcome at last. But, well, he went through a lot mm -hmm. to overcome. They'll endure the opposition, even some fierce attacks. Now, the marvelous type, of course, is seen in the depiction of the of the tenure of the saints on earth. They do experience warfare. They, yeah, yeah. There are things they have to cast down. There are things they have to resist. There are things they have to oppose and fight against. Sometimes it's even more fierce than others. There, there comes times when they appear as though they actually overcome. All strength is departed. Like Paul said, we, we, were, we, give, we were despaired of hope. We, we didn't see any way out at all. You see in the truth that when that's when the truth is seen, truth falls in the street. And it, and it fails, doesn't do its work. You may stand up and quote Bible, read Bible and all that, and you may think that that's, that's good, and we're not certainly, we're not opposed to that, but that's not going to turn the tide of the battle. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, it's not going to turn the tide of the battle. Somebody's got to fight. Amen. Resist and stand. In the early church, they didn't have this problem. Great numbers of people were converted. Great numbers were added to the church. They were multiplied. When they were scattered, they didn't go everywhere griping. 
They were never were preaching the words. He's a different. It was a different caliber of people. Right. You've got to see this. It was a different kind of people. Some people scatter that are Christians. They scatter are the most meager things. Uh, that's right. Early church didn't. As the years passed, so the church pretty soon was overrun with error. The apostles, while they were alive, dealt with it, but it lost its power. Mm -hmm. It lost its power. Now today, men have created theologies that explain the loss of power. Yes. They yeah. say, well, God doesn't do that anymore. But they don't tell us why God doesn't do that anymore. Yeah. They say that it was on like a time clock. That he wound it up and let, let all this powerful stuff and all these things. You read the book of Acts. It happened for a while and finally it just, it just passed away. But see, I'm not, I'm not sure that's right. that's right. I think what happened is the church got too weak to hold the power. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. We, had, we had old wineskins. Yeah. They kept old wineskins and pretty soon they couldn't contain the power. But the church will not ultimately end up this way. Amen. It's not going to ultimately end up this way. The knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. See, it's all seen back there in Gad. He was a type of it. Now let's look at Asher. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. That is, it's gonna, his bread will be fat, be rich food, rich, nourishing type food, plentiful. One version said he'll eat fancy food. Delicacies, that's royal delicacies. That's like king's, mm -hmm. uh, king's meal. God told Abraham, he said, uh, I'll give you the, oh, uh, Pharaoh told Joseph, uh, Jacob, I'll give you the good of the land of Egypt, and you shall eat the fat of the land. See, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. God promised through with prophets and Moses that they'd have a land of fat and plenty. Yeah. See, uh, he's saying uh, Asher will have this kind of uh, food and royal, royal dainties. They'll have foods that whoa. Uh, here, let me let me just read to you one day's menu. This is one day's menu of Solomon. Yeah. Single day. Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour, three score measures of meal, 10 fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures, 100 sheep beside hearts as deers and roebucks and fallow deers and fatted fowl. That was one day, one yeah. Royal dainties. See, that's royal. Yeah. <laughs> royal. Remember when Queen of Sheba saw this? <laughs> it was overwhelming to her. When the Queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and their cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there's no more spirit in her. Oh, I'll tell you, Joel Olstein would like a side classroom. I'm telling you the truth, that's, that's what it would be. What men think is great today, was, it was nothing. So when he says royal dainties, I'll tell you that, uh, that was a rich fair. And I give you some historical quotes about the land that uh, Asher occupied, and it was, it was a unparalleled for richness and fatness. Now, of course, you, you know the type of this, I'm sure. When it comes to the things of the Lord, the saints are to develop pellets for rich food. Amen. Amen. I mean, they're not to get accustomed to uh, carrots and green peppers. Yeah. Spiritual carrot, mm -hmm. uh, celery. This is not what God serves up. Here's how the prophets put it. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. 
Psalmist said, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful praise. Isaiah said, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Yeah. Now you know that there are, there are aspects of the truth that are appropriately called fat things. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're unusually nourishing. Yeah. Now you can take, this is in the Bible. This, this is in the Bible. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do good to all men. That's in the Bible. But that's not as nourishing as the Lord bless thee and keep thee and make his face shine upon thee. That's not as nourishing yeah. as that. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So develop an appetite for the rich. The rich things are things you have to think about. Amen. Things you have to muse upon. Things you have to make a connection between these things and your own, mm -hmm. your own life unto the Lord. Some people say, well, let's put it down on the lower shelf so everybody can get it. But that's wrong thinking. That is wrong thinking. That is wrong thinking. The idea is to put it on the upper shelf and grow the people up so they can reach it. Then you, then you don't have the scum and the vermin verm eating around on it. Right. A failure to meet this objective, eating the fat things, inevitably will result in falling away. Yeah. That, was the te that was the subject of Hebrews 5 and 6. Yeah. For reason of time, you ought to to be teachers. You ought to be eating meat, but you've got to have someone give you the milk bottle still, and he tells them the danger of falling away. This will set you up for a fall. If you don't get accustomed to the deep things of God, you're on the way down. It doesn't make any difference from what else anyone tells you. That's a solemn morning in Hebrews 5 and 6. Fat things. If this is true, then preachers and teachers that teach shallow stuff are actually jeopardizing their audience. Amen. They're putting their audience in danger. Amen. Some point in human history, when the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth, the waters cover the sea, it's my opinion there'll be an outcry against this kind of stuff, and there'll be a demand for nourishing and fat things. That's the only way the knowledge of the Lord will, co see, will cover the earth, yeah. the waters cover the sea. Amen. Now, God has pledged to do this. He did it through one of the prophets, Jeremiah. He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yeah. I'll do that. But see, Amen. Israel had to get out of that state they were in before that would happen. Yes. That's why the prophets warned them. Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah, I my own, this is my own opinion, but uh, the meat of the word, or that those fat things, I think they have more to do with the nature of God, who God is, and His purpose. Mm -hmm. Whereas the the milk or the the less weighty things of Scripture would have to do like with what you ha you need to do, like the law. Yeah, that, yes, and, I agree. And those kind of, I don't know that I can go to a, a verse and prove that, but that's my own that's my yeah, own that's feeling. I, I like to think of it as also the implications of Scripture, the implications of the truth, which the implications of the gospel and redemptive truth are further, extend further than others. You've got to see, mm -hmm. see that. These are the things that are hidden from men. Mm -hmm. The text of the Bible, you can read, anybody can read that. Yeah. Uh -huh. They can read. Mm -hmm. But there's jewels hidden in there. Yeah. And they, Brother Jason is right. The meat, the thing that nourishes you, are things related immediately to God and to Christ. It's got to be centered in Christ. That's right. All right, let's look at Naphtali. Naphtali is a hind let loose. <laughs> yeah, the translators, they come through again really strong for us here. 
Some verses read, a, a deer let loose, a doe let loose, a doe set free, a wild doe that gives birth to beautiful fawns. That's right, that, that's the version. A spreading stem, Septuagint, a free-running doe, a swift hind, a hind sent away, a trunk springing up. A spreading stem and a wild deer and a hind let loose. So that's, uh, <laughs> no wonder some people have a hard time understanding the scripture. Keep in mind that these are prophetic words. Uh, it seems to me you shouldn't really have to have a lot of exhortation on this, that when you're handling, if you're a translator and you're handling a prophecy of God, you got to be careful you know what you're talking Amen. about. And if you don't, you just need to get another job. Yes. Get out of that business. Be taken seriously. This is why the Jews, they were afraid like to write God's name. They're afraid, they, afraid they'd misspell yeah. it. God raised up these Jews, and whatever you may think about them, they were excellent copyists. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. They found some of these scrolls. There weren't mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They made sure they were right. See, that, that kind of attitude doesn't exist very much today. Now, the blessing pronounced upon Naphtali by Moses seems to kind of go along here. It says, Of Naphtali... He said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. So, verse it'll see west, south, west of a lot of, lot of territory. And he shall, speak, uh, he shall speak goodly words. Goodly words. Well, let's see, let's see how the translators did on this. He has beautiful words. He bears beautiful fawns and utters beautiful words. Bears lovely fawns. Isn't that rich? Bears comely fawns, giving fair young ones, bestowing beauty on its fruit. Speaks delightful words, giving beauteous young ones. Producing lovely fawns. Bestowing beauty on its fruit. His words are beautiful. Produces eloquent literature. Give forth a good word. Giving one, well anyway, you see... <laughs> It seems to me that what he's talking about here is that he'd have an ability of expression. Like when Barak sung that beautiful song, him and Deborah, Barak was from the tribe of Naphtali. Oh, he knew how to express. David was an expert in expression, see, like this. So that's the type of thing as I understand he's talking about. And incidentally, when Barak and Deborah sang it, it had an adver adverse effect on the enemy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when they did. Now we come to Joseph. The blessing pronounced on Joseph reflects divine compensation for all the yeah. hardship he went through. Remember, it said he sent him down to Joseph, and he makes this salient statement in Psalm 105, 21. He made him the Lord of his house and ruler of his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Yeah. Hey, boy, that's a long haul from a boy in a pit. That's right, yeah. So we're talking about some recompense here. Those who are in Christ must learn to labor with expectation. I mean, tonight, you may be in the pit. I've been in there not long ago. I've been in there, but you have to, be, you have to keep this expectation. I'm, I'm coming out of here. Amen. I'm not intended to live down here in this uh, discouraged state. This did wake up that morning. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Sleep that night in the house. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Amen. Come on. One day. The expectation. Yeah, that's, that's right. He had this expectation yeah. too. Never judge nothing before the time. Till the Lord come, who shall both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise from God. So if you live and die in a low estate, it's not over. It's not over. Well, what do we have to say about Joseph? He's a fruitful bough. Even a fruitful bough by a well. 
whose branches run over the wall. See, when Joseph were earlier, when he was at home, up to he was 17, he didn't look like a fruitful bough, that's for sure. It didn't look like he was planted by a well and vine running over the wall. When he was in Potiphar's house, it didn't look like that either. Yeah. Or in prison. But now Jacob addresses Joseph and speaks of what Joseph himself would become. At the time of the prophecy, Joseph had two sons, right? Mm -hmm. Ephraim and Manasseh. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all he had. So it didn't look too fruitful at that time. Uh, at that point. But now he's going to address Joseph in view of the covenant. God made with Abraham. Now I want don't I, I don't want you to miss this. I'm sure you see it, but this they these men always spoke in view of the covenant that yes. God made. They all yeah. this is always in their mind. Yeah. Always uppermost in their mind. The covenant God had made with Abraham. Now this now to translate that over to us, we've always got to have in our mind the covenant we had. It, Yes. That God has given us in Christ Jesus. Yeah. We've got to have that covenant. That's right. You can't get bogged down now in the things of this world and yeah. circumstances of this world. You've got to keep your mind on that covenant. These men show that it can be done, see? Yes. <coughs> He's going to be a fruitful bough. Fruitful bough. Let's see how the translators handle this. A fruitful bough. Well, here's one translation a young ox. Here's another, a young bull. Here's another, a growing sun, a sun increase. Here's one, a wild colt. Here's one, the foal of a wild donkey, a wild ass. A fruitful sun, a sun increasing, zealous, a descended from a fruitful vine. That's, thank you, translators. What does that prove to you? It proves to you the answer is not in the original language. I know I've said this a thousand times. I'm going to keep on saying it. That's not where it's at. You've got to have spiritual understanding, and Amen. only God can give that. That's right. Amen. Now, what we have a kind of a mathematical equation here. Flesh plus man's wisdom plus an ignorance of God's purpose equals man's version. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> that's good. <clears throat> now, this is positioned by a well, so it's a, it's a constant nourishment. And the constant nurse was taken in, and the vine, the vine just finally outgrows the territory, <laughs> goes over the wall. Depicted the massive expanse of Joseph's offspring. Now, on the preceding page, Ephraim and Manasseh occupied the majority of the promised land, those two tribes. They expanded. The biggest tribe of fighting men was Judah, they had 76,500, but Ephraim and Manasseh had 85,000. They, they expanded, run over the wall. In fact, they remember they asked, we got to have more territory, Joshua. We don't have enough territory. What were they doing? The vine was running over the wall. Yes, see? Amen. Can you see that? <laughs> you see, it says, <laughs> the archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. Well, he doubtless talking about his brothers. Yeah. Pharaoh didn't even do that. Right. He's all talking about his brothers. They tried to wound him, bitterly hated him, harassed him. Skilled archers shooting at him all the time. Look at it. Who's that coming down there? The dreamer. There he is. But according to the record, no one actually attacked Joseph militantly or beat him up or anything like that. According to the record, nobody did that. But this was a different kind of oppression we're talking about here. No one, no one attacked Jesus that way as long as he was ministering, but he was grieved because of what he had to face. But what uh, jo Jacob, uh, J Joseph, but he, he abodes in strength. His bow abode in strength. All this didn't, didn't beat him down. Yeah. Even when he was a boy, it didn't, it didn't beat him down. He went from the slave market to the head of a house. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Huh? This is what he did. Yeah. 
out of the pit, off of a slave market, and into the head of a house. How was he able to do that? He has had his bow, a bow to strength. He kept his faith. Yeah, amen. He's a type of Christ in this way. Amen. He says that he will be a stone, uh, a shepherd, a, the shepherd as a stone. No, it's eluded me for a minute here. Stone of Israel. He would be a shepherd, the stone of Israel. Now that, it's, you may think he's talking about Christ, but he's not. Because Christ didn't come from Joseph's lineage. Joseph is the one that was made a shepherd and a stone. In other words, he, had, he shepherded Israel while they were growing up in Egypt, and he was a stone, solid. He held his position, see? He held his position all through that time. God made him a shepherd and a stone of Israel yeah. to sustain his... Yeah. Our time did not easily wear him away. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. Then he tells him, <laughs> the God of thy father shall help thee. Mm -hmm. I mean, what he says to Joseph seems beyond possibility, but he said the Lord will help you in this. Mm -hmm. The mighty will bless you. And it's going to be a plenitude of blessing. He'll bless you with blessings of heaven above. All right, that's dew and showers. He'll bless you with uh, blessings of the deep brooks, rivers, springs. See, exactly what God said was going to be in the land of Canaan. In other words, this, these were blessings that were going to be on the land that they were going to inherit. And Jacob says, um, thy father, which was Jacob, his blessings have prevailed above his, my progenitors, Abraham and Isaac. From the experiential point of view, Jacob experienced more blessings than Abraham and Isaac from the exper from experiential point of view. In other words, the realization of the promise of God in human experience grew and multiplied as time passed on. So if you're th two generations away from Abraham, the bless the river got wider. Yeah, amen. That's why it's this way. It wasn't because he was better. Mm -hmm. That's not why. It's because the, the, the promise was like Ezekiel's river. Mm -hmm. It come out from the covenant, began to spread. By the time it got down to Jacob, mm -hmm. the thing had got a lot, a lot wider. It is, it's really got wide now. That's the manner of the kingdom. Yeah. The lesser is always at the beginning. The greater is at the ending. That's the way the kingdom of God is. But here's how men think. They think the best is at the beginning. Yeah. Uh -huh. The early church. That's, we're trying to restore the early church. Well, which one? Yeah. Well, they have successfully they have successfully restored the church at Laodicea. Now they've they did a good job at that. They've restored that. And they restored the one at Ephesus that left the first love. Yeah. See, this is flawed reasoning. Uh -huh. This is not even right yeah, to yeah. try and restore the first century church. Hmm. The, the first century church was not intended to be a static symbol. Amen. It was a beginning. Yes. The church today should be light years ahead of the church in Jerusalem. Amen. That's, right. Amen. That's why God's going to work a special work just to show you this is the case. Amen. That the the last harvest is going to be bigger than yes. the first one. See, that's how he's going to prove that. I'm going to prove that to you. And he was separate from his brethren. <laughs> so jo Joseph's going to receive this blessing without having to be a part of the other group. Mm -hmm. Separate from his brethren. They separated him. Yes. See, they, they separated yes. Joseph. But what happened was God gave the bulk of the blessing to him, and they were left out. Yeah, uh -huh. Why are they left out? Now let's look at Benjamin. He's the last one. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf, be a ravenous wolf, as a, a wolf searching for meat, a wolf who hunts. 
Benzema would be noted for having an aggressive military stance. I'll give you one example of the aggressiveness of Benjamin. In one battle, the tribe of Benjamin had 26,000 men, and they went up against the men of Israel who had 400,000 men, and they soundly defeated them like a ravenous wolf. 26,000 against 400,000, and they mopped them up, so to speak. Now, the prophecy was actually fulfilled in another place, in a great spiritual warrior who cast down imaginations and uh -huh. high thoughts and the apostle Paul was from this tribe yeah, and he has thrown down more heresies than any other person yeah. he shall devour the and divide the prey so it's like a, the wolf devours the prey then hauls it up to his den and feeds the others that's what uh, that's what you're going to divide the spoil. Mm -hmm. You're not going to hog it all for yourself. And Paul, that's what Paul did. Mm -hmm. He had more and he distributed. Yeah. Amen. He divided the spoil. And the ultimate conqueror, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Mm -hmm. See? So you can see in all these, there's, all of these tribes are aspects. Now I've got a page in here at the end that shows you that each of the things that the tribe were noted for was an aspect of Christ. If you take all the things, let me, give me a moment here and I'll, yes, this on uh, page fif 15. I'm going to name the traits of each of the sons according to the meaning of their name. Begins with Reuben. A son, hearing and obeys, wreathed or associated with him, honored, praised, a habitation, hired and a reward, a judge, fortune, happiness, fights, increaser, son of my right hand, double fruitfulness, and one who makes me forget. That's a composite yeah. of Christ Amen. Jesus. They, they had asked, but it's phenomenal. And he shall divide and spoil the sp uh, divide this this prey. All these are the twelve tribes. This is it now. You've seen God announce ahead of time the destiny of these tribes. Yeah, uh -huh. These are the twelve tribes. Here's a nation whose existence is absolutely miraculous. Mm -hmm. We come a long way from an impotent Sarah and a barren. An impotent Abraham and a barren Sarah. We come a long way now. Amen. Yes. I was just thinking about this here. <laughs> so whenever uh, the Jews finally turn, yeah. just imagine all that's these things it. coming right. in the <laughs> uh, aspect yeah. of showing Christ. They'll see it. Yeah. Amen. See, it. <laughs> Amen. see what a disadvantage the Gentile church is at, which yeah. is the product of Gentile ministers. Mm -hmm. This is what the ministers have produced. The churches are what the ministers have produced. You don't have to, you don't have to be a degreed person to figure that out. This is their product. According to, according to blessing, he blessed them. That is, according to what God had determined, he blessed them. He, this wasn't Jacob's personal... Am, uh, desires or ambitions for his sons. Mm -hmm. This was God's. Yeah. He was a prophet Amen. in this. That's so when he blessed, mm -hmm. according to his blessing, he blessed them. He didn't throw any of his thoughts mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. All these are the 12 tribes. Now Jacob has uh, done what he wanted to do. Wanted to announce to the sons their destiny, which means he was in a sound state of mind. Now, he's going to die right now. Right, right at this point, he's going to die. But he's in perfect soundness of mind. So he charged them, said unto them, I am to be gathered to my people. He, go ahead, yes. Someone is to have that type of soundness of mind as they are passing away. 
then they had to have cultured that That's throughout right. their whole <laughs> life. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, you can't gain that at that time. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, at least not under ordinary circumstances. Yeah. He charged them. Now notice... This is the culture now that God created this culture. These are all middle-aged men he's talking to here. These aren't like a little bunch of little children. These are middle-aged men with big families themselves. Mm -hmm. And he charges them. Mm -hmm. See, you, see, some sons would who are you? Well, I'm not at home anymore. What are you doing? This is the culture that they were raised in. Yeah. That the one who knows the most can say the most. Yeah. The one that sees the furthest can dictate the most. Mm -hmm. That's the way the kingdom operates. So he charges them. They don't, none of them balk. None of them balk. They were raised up this way. In fact, I don't think you'll find any of the, of the covenant sons of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob that objected to what their father said or said, I'm not going to do it. That's right. uh -huh. I don't think you'll find any incident like that. That's how they were raised. See, raising children, the world doesn't know how to do it. And it's not an easy task. No, it's not an easy task. But if you can produce the majority of your children, if you can produce this kind of children, you, you, you're right in line with the rest of the patriarchs. You are. Who, When you talk, they listen. When you ask, they do. That's when they're grown up. He charged them. See, the lives of these patriarchs, remember, were shaped by God's word and doing. This is where they this is where they lived and what they thought. They did not think outside the circumference of God's will. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am gathered, I am to be gathered unto my people. Unique scriptural reference referring to dying. I'm going to be gathered to my people. See his lucidity of mind? Yes. Uh -huh. Please pray for me. I'm dying. Pray I won't. Yeah, he's just, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm getting ready to die now. The same statement is, and I'm going to be gathered to my people. The same statement, gathered to my people, said of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses too when he died. He was gathered to his people. And Aaron is said of him too. They were gathered to their people. Now the word gathered means to remove and associate with someone else. Now this the soul sleepers don't like this, but I don't like the soul sleepers, so it's don't have anything to do with them. They say when you die you're you're just unconscious and you're you're in a state of limbo, and that's what they teach. And it's gaining popularity, see, because we've got, a, we've got church people that are pretty ignorant. So they're buying into all this. They, they appeal to, to Solomon, to David, and to Job, who didn't know squat about death. Life and immortality was brought to light by the gospel. Solomon didn't know anything about life beyond and what little bit David knew was very brief. Job had just some smattering of understanding. You don't go to these men mm -hmm. to find out the state of the dead. They didn't know themselves. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We have uh, in Scripture an example of uh, what happened when a person died that was righteous. Now, so they were gathered. We might call it reaping. Mm -hmm. As I see, this is the angels that mm -hmm. gather them. Mm -hmm. And we have an example of a man in Scripture that this, this actually happened to. Mm -hmm. Is Lazarus. It came to pass that a beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's yeah. bosom. Mm -hmm. Carried to Abraham's bosom. That equates to gathered to his people. See, that's, mm -hmm. that's just another way of saying that. Mm -hmm. If... That does mean gathered to his people means he just went to the grave. Mm -hmm. Then he was also gathered with all the heathen, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's where they are too. Yeah. So this can't this can't be can't be what it means. Jesus made a particular point of the state of the dead when he confronted the Sadducees. <clears throat> 
They didn't believe there were angels, spirits, or the resurrection of the dead. But they got along fine with the Pharisees, who did believe this, but they got along. They worked against in opposing Christ. They just forged an alliance. They were able to table their differences, I guess. But Jesus uh, confronted them about this, and they posed a hypothetical situation where a man, a woman was married to a man, he died, and she married again, he died, and and she married again, he died, and she had seven husbands. They said, which husband in the resurrection, which, who's going to be her husband? Boy, they thought they had him there. But here's what he said. As touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which is spoken unto you, that which is spoken unto you by God, saying, I am God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Isaac, and the... God of Jacob, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Jesus is telling them that there's a sense in which Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob weren't dead. Their body was dead. God is not the God of the dead. God's not superintendent over sleeping souls in the tomb. That's not what God is. He's not even the God of the dead at all. And I praise the Lord uh, for it. Yes. Even though they've died, it cannot be said that they were unconscious. God is not the God of the unconscious. Yeah. You know, oh, it, 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 because it's a, there's a reciprocity that happens between God and those who are, who are under him. And we have examples of four, four people who, after they left the world, were fully conscious, knowledgeable, and talked. And we have uh, Abraham, he talked with the rich man. We have Moses, who was on the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, and Lazarus, who was comforted. Now, they were all gathered to their people, see? When he looked over there, he didn't find the rich man mingling them there with, uh, right. with the re- <laughs> Abraham and Lazarus. He was gathered to his people, too. You might say everybody will be gathered to their people. Yeah. Yes, brother. Yeah, I'm often amazed at, the, at, at people in their lack of understanding of just the simple language of Scripture. The, the, mm-hmm. the language, the soul sleepers talk about falling asleep mm-hmm. because the Scripture does say he fell asleep. Stephen, it says, uh-huh. fell asleep. He yeah. fell asleep. They, they don't understand. This is a this is a term. Falling asleep is a term that has to do with the hope of resurrection. That's right. If you. <laughs> When you go to sleep at night, you go to sleep in hopes of waking up in the morning. That's mm-hmm. that's what that that's yeah. what that's referring to. It's a it's a hopeful term, and it does it does have to do with the appearance of the body. From the, the appearance right. of the body, it looks, right it looks like they're falling asleep. <laughs> and and the hope the hope of that's a Christian hope. Christian hope is the body's going to wake up. The yes, body's right. going to be raised. Now, mm-hmm. It's not just that we're going to exist spiritually forever somewhere. The immortality of the soul is that there's going to, there's going to be a resurrection. That's right. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Get sleep from the standpoint of the body. That's yeah. exactly right. Uh-huh. Now he said, now, remember, he's, getting, he's going to die. <laughs> he's getting ready to die. But he's concerned about what they're going to do with his body. Yeah, that's right. Now, in our fair city, no. I have had a number of discussions on this subject mm-hmm. with the, quote, doctors of the law. Mm-hmm. And you, I, you would just be surprised at what some of them think. Yeah. So I won't tell you. I don't want you to be so surprised. He's concerned. See, they, this argument, they, I've heard these arguments. These have been leveled at me yeah. when we've been talking about this. What difference does it make? How the body's handled? Well, note the text. Jacob yeah. thinks there was a big diff- a big issue about yes. what's done with his body. Uh-huh. He said, bury me with my fathers in the cave that's in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that's in the field of Machpelah, or specificity, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham brought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a position of a burying place. Well, that's pretty particular. He pin- yeah. You didn't need a garment on that one. <laughs> Told you exactly. Does it make any difference what's done with your body? 
Jacob said it did. Did it make a difference what was done with Jesus' body? Mm. The gospel says it did. Yeah. Stephen died. Did it make any difference what he did with his body? Mm -hmm. He was buried. When Moses died, did it make any difference? God buried him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, it doesn't make a difference. Even though the mortician will come over these days and say, what will we call you 7,000? We'll just call, cost you 925. Uh -huh. And they talk some people into that. Many people. Many people. Yes, you're right. Now, this field was purchased 175 years before this. So through several generations, this knowledge had been passed. Yeah. I mean, I, I would venture to say that you know very little about your own family that is beyond this present generation. Some people have taken the time to kind of search it out, mm -hmm. but they're not many. But you, very little. But see, this wasn't so with them. Mm -hmm. They kept these things alive. Amen. They didn't say, bear me somewhere in Canaan. No, oh, no. It was a particular place in Canaan, particular location, particular field, particular cave. Mm -hmm. Bear me there. So with those in Christ... We're concerned about our burial. Amen. And I know arguments can be presented, but I just, for me, I just don't listen to them. You'll have to do whatever you think is best. And when Jacob made an end of commanding, he's commanding. These are grown men now. Mm -hmm. He's commanding, made an end of commanding his sons. Mm -hmm. Made an end of it. I want to one last time draw attention to this culture, mm -hmm. what they did certain aspect that everything related to their association with God, even the burial mm -hmm. in Canaan. That's the land God gave us in Canaan. Yeah. If you want to spiritualize it, I want to die in the church. I don't mean yeah. uh -huh. structured church. I mean among God's people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And my, I want my life to end with God's people. Yeah. Amen. If it's physically impossible, and in my heart it's not. That you understand what I'm, yeah. uh -huh. what I'm saying here. That's where I want to be buried. Jacob's sons will find it. They did exactly what he said. And then it says he gathered his feet up into his bed. He's getting ready to die now. Uh -huh. I can tell you that. Uh, for me, gathering my feet into my bed, it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to die. He just probably had exhausted, he was pretty probably exhausted having delivered this, these prophecies, which I imagine this is like a kind of a summation of what he said. Mm -hmm. He gathered his feet up into his bed. <laughs> That's said of several people. When Joseph came, remember, he raised up. Probably he'd been sitting on the edge of the bed, mm -hmm. sitting up. He didn't, he didn't deliver these prophecies laying down, mm -hmm. raised up. Then he gathered up his feet into his, his bed, and he yielded up the ghost. Now, this is translated a number of ways. One is breathed his last, gave up his spirit, took his last breath and died, expired, failed. There's different ways this is. But to me, yielded up the ghost or yielded up his spirit. Ghost is an old English word that did used to mean this, it was synonymous with spirit. The reason was it was this... They called it ghost because it connected with a, a, a person, a spirit with a personality. It had a ghost as a beep, as compared to a spirit of a beast. So there's a reason why they used that word. It isn't like just a dumb word. There was a reason why they used it. <clears throat> to me, there's a depiction here of a resignation, a peaceful resignation to, to death. It's the point the man wants to die, to be able to... Just yield it up. Mm -hmm. There's a single word 
yielded up the ghost is, is translated from a single word. Apparently there isn't an English word that precisely says what this word says. It tells it means to give up the ghost, yield up the ghost, be ready to die, breathe out. But see, those that's physiological, the breath. And if you've ever been around someone that dies, this, just, this, just the breath just goes out of them. But that's, that's too bodily to suit me. I see these words as similar to the words of Jesus on the cross, except he dismissed his spirit. His, his death was different. He dismissed. Yeah. He, di he didn't die by men's hands. He died by his own will. Yeah. Yeah. Dismissed his spirit. But he, he submitted to this. And what Jacob, he's submitting to this, he said some prophecies that I guess could have broke his heart, but he he didn't allow it. Didn't allow it to happen. He yielded up the spirit. Paul talked about dying this way. He said, departing from the body. See? This is how they this is how inspired, insightful men talked about it. Or being absent from the body. Peter said, put off my tabernacle. See, so the real you mm -hmm. in death will finally be free Amen. from this mm -hmm. prison house. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's like a prison house. Mm -hmm. We're warring against the law of your mind. Mm -hmm. And he was gathered to his people. What a gathering that must have been. This is something. This is something accomplished by someone other gathered to his people. This is accomplished by someone other than the one dying. Someone else does this, and as I say, this is the angels are the reapers. So, I imagine they'll talk to us on the way. You know, <laughs> fought a good fight. Very good. We, it was a pleasure ministering to you. Or some people they have to say, "Well, you are a tough, tough hombre." Yeah. <laughs> so, from the standpoint of, uh, from his standpoint, he was taken mm -hmm. to his people. Mm -hmm. From the standpoint of his people, he was brought yeah, to his man. people. Yeah. See, so you got you got to see both sides. And if that gallery of witnesses, if there are really a gallery of witnesses beholding us, mm -hmm. he'd have been gathered to people that had been privy to some of the things he went through. Mm -hmm. Welcome him, welcome him to the yeah, homeland. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I'll close there. I did have these these uh, additions here. Some of them, they were just kind of interesting. One was the the counts. I had the count of Moses. Of just, these are the men 20, 20 years and upward. He counted in numbers 601,500. Then it, when they got down to the promised land, 603,000. But years later, David counted them, and there was 1,300,000. 600,000, 800,000 soldiers in Israel and 500,000 in Judah. So I'm always showing like the expansion of the of the thing. Any of you have a word you'd like to say? Yes, Brother Ricky. Provoked by Jacob that he didn't, he wasn't distracted when his body was in a weakened state <laughs> from right. doing what God had called him to That's do. Right. Even in the end, he was going to fulfill his work. Mm -hmm. To me, he's like a he's like an example of what Paul said when he said, "I keep under my body yeah. and make it my slave." Amen. Is, that's like strong, aggressive language. Amen. Uh, so I, I, I'm thankful for men like this. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I live in close proximity to men that are like this. That their body is not cooperating, mm -hmm. but they just <laughs> make it cooperate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In order. It, it, and not just for the sake of doing it, but because there's a work to be done, Amen. they know it, Amen. and they're not going to let their body keep them from doing what God has called them to do. Yeah. And I know, as you have you just indicated, I know the rest of you have noticed that 
your own growth and how you get a lot more out of these things than maybe you would have some years back. You see, just like this observation, you made mo most of us, it was a while before we could make an observation like that. But see, it's all you're fed by all this. This is real faith being lived out. Amen. It was... It, it was limited in the sense that there wasn't, it didn't have the foundation yours, yours has. Mm -hmm. So you can be better. Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah, a couple of thoughts on the, the cremation issue. The, it used to be that people people were buried. They actually called it a Christian burial. Christian burial. It was actually referred to as that. And it was, it, was, it was done because it was the act of burying a body. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are easier ways to dispose of bodies mm -hmm. than burial. Oh, yes. Uh, but it was it was done that way in hope in of hope. resurrection. Yeah. It's that's right. why it was that's why it Soul. was done. Mm -hmm. And yeah. mm -hmm. and so it seems that the that has been lost because there's there's very little knowledge of even the biblical doctrine of mm -hmm. resurrection I know it. I know it. in this, in these days. But you'll notice that people have a there is a certain philosophy of the body. People mm -hmm. actually in our culture they actually worship their bodies. No, oh, yeah. Until they die. Until they die. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is they don't have any hope. They're, yeah, they're, they're hanging good. on. Yeah, that's good. They're hanging on to this body okay. in this world. But but you know that we were made to inhabit a body. Yeah. And in Amen. fact, you were you were saved to inhabit a new body. Amen. That's what Paul said. God made us or remade us for this self same purpose. Amen. There is, yeah. I think it's in Second Thessalonians. Second Corinthians five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians five. The yes. Self same thing. The yeah. same, self same thing. That's why you were saved. So we're we're not looking forward to a bodiless existence. He says we're not we're not longing to be unclothed. No. But to be clothed. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See now our bodies now are like a tent. Yes. But you don't you don't pitch a tent to live in it permanently. Yeah. So we're look we're looking for a permanent home. Amen. Yes. And that's the mansion that Jesus talked about. Mm -hmm. That's yes. waiting for us. Paul talked about a burial as sowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It is sown in corruption. It is raised mm -hmm. in corruption. Mm -hmm. So it's like planting. You're you're like it's a fan. And baptism is a, of course, a figure of that. See, mm -hmm. you planted and raised. That's right. Yes, Ada. This account makes me think to a situation that. I knew of, of a godly man who who was dying and he had some children that some that were believers and some that were not and one thing that I remember so distinctly about his death was that as he weakened he weakened to the point that we we really thought we were going to lose him and all of a sudden he gained this unusual strength and he was lucid mm -hmm. and he spoke very powerful words to all of his children. Mm. And then as soon as he was done speaking to them all, he, he declined again mm -hmm. and died in the very same day. Mm -hmm. And it left such a very profound impact on his kids. They were, it's like their ears were more open mm -hmm. and very unusual. But as I'm, I, it causes me to sort of look at Jacob's death a little bit differently and see how it, it was such a confirmation that that the Lord was in what was being spoken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It yeah. wasn't in Jacob's strength mm -hmm. that he was speaking this. That's right. It was through the power of, of God in him mm -hmm. and how the Lord is able to enliven our, our bodies to do that which yes. he, he wants us to speak Amen. and to do. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah, that something else that dawned on me that there was nothing of personal gain that could come from these prophecies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, it was strictly the prophecy spoken in behalf of the Lord. Yeah, there was amen. no personal yeah. benefit. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Mm. And it's like the Lord honored um, Judah. Now he 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 likes. Uh, we've already heard the Lord strengthened him to do it, but, but but when he gathered, put his feet into his bed, and then he he he, he let go, as it were, God honored him and allowed him to die. That's right. That, that's quite a. That's quite, I mean, the Lord the Lord he he can do it 
but, but Jacob didn't resist. You know, it, it, you, a lot of people. I've only been around a few people that died, but but um, they um, they can have a tendency to want to hang on. Yeah. But Judah didn't. He he let he just let it go. And it's not another thing I was thinking about. This whole account we've in Genesis, Moses wrote it. God gave it to Moses to write it. So I mean, so we're not seeing like like somebody's personal slant on it. We're seeing God's That's what right. what God Amen. said. Amen. So I mean, this is there's no way that that um that any of this stuff was like. Like, like there was any flesh involved because God gave it to Moses. I, so obviously it's not. This is exactly what we needed to know about that time because it so amply would prepare us to understand uh, what's going on now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I often thought about this uh, this time when Jacob died. I, I've read mm -hmm. that a lot and, and thought about this, but I never really saw that this strength now... Now, Jacob had some words for his own sons, mm -hmm. but they were God's tribes. Mm -hmm. yes. And I never saw uh, as clear as I do now that this strength that he had to sit up mm -hmm. and give yeah. these things. Now, that that, yes. that came from God. And as soon yes. as he got that job done, see, uh -huh. he, he pulled up his legs <laughs> and then, you know, he was able to, but God had to sort of kind of slowly yeah. Or he just removed that strength. He used up that yeah. that, that right. strength God had given him to, to do this work. I thought to myself, that's a good point that Sister Ada made there. Mm -hmm. Now we can we can uh, we can we can expect God now to give us the strength to do these things yes. when we're like we're when the physical body doesn't really want to that's right. cooperate. That's you know? right. Amen. Now, that's a that's a good that's good to see that. Or when it shouldn't even be able to do it. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yes, it's about this time of sensitivity and sobriety and death. Uh, you see that the man of God took the preeminence, took advantage of that time. It's considering that in whenever we are confronted with a circumstance of death, mm -hmm. and the Lord gives us an opportunity, it's important that those believers who are uh, able and capable to speak for the Lord take advantage of that time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And one other thing about this um, cremation thing, you know, I was looking into that to um, to make a case for it. You know, God God was pretty plain about w w how he felt about that. And, and Nadab and Abihu, he burned them up. Yeah. Achan, Joshua burned them up. Yeah. Okay, and um, you can follow it through the scriptures. Any, anytime somebody was, I mean, a Jew was gonna was gonna burn. Was it Tamar? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He was gonna burn her. Because he said she played the harlot. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, then he found out different. But, yeah. but, but that's what he was going to do. There was a sign of being cursed, yeah. Yeah. Burn, to to burn someone. This was quite a serious thing, and so for it to become a custom in our time, it sure does tell yeah. say a lot about the way people they don't understand. The Philistines burned Saul and his sons. Uh huh. Yeah. But they left their bones. Remember? Yes, they did. The mm -hmm. Israelites come and got their bones. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Joseph's bones. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we appreciate very much this record of Jacob, and we we understand more fully why the God of Jacob is such a significant term. We thank you that he's an example of someone who shaped his life around your promises and around your word, that valued the promised land enough that he wanted to be identified with it. And Father, we value the promise, the land you promised us. Amen. We look forward to it, a better country, and a city whose builder and maker is God. And we ask that as the time approaches, and we're going to depart, that you give us enough strength to bring glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen.